Today, we're talking about this, the Wise Phone. If you've seen my review of the Light Phone 2, you will probably remember that that phone is just not for me. I found it caused a lot more problems than it did good in my life. If you wanna watch it, I'll link it here, but then come back to this video because this phone, in my opinion, is the better version of what Light Phone 2 is trying to do. So to begin with, Wise Phone is created by a company called Techless. Techless is dedicated to creating technology that enhances life without the distractions of conventional smartphones. Their flagship product, the Wise Phone, emphasizes simplicity and functionality, offering basic tools like calling and texting while eschewing apps and the internet to minimize distractions. With the upcoming Wise Phone 2, users can expect an evolution of this philosophy, focusing on essential communication tools, privacy, and a design that supports a more intentional and less distracted lifestyle. So that's a little bit about Techless, which I just wanted to share to give perspective on why they've created this phone. By the way, at any time in this video, if you're interested in pre-ordering the Wise Phone 2, this is the first edition, the first model. It's based on a Motorola phone, so it's basically just showcasing the operating system. Wise Phone 2 will be its own complete device created by the company, but if any time during this video you would like to pre-order yours, check the link in the description for an extra $25 off of your pre-order, and there's already a deal running right now on the phone, so get it while it's hot while these deals are still on the table. Today I'm going to talk about why I think Wise Phone is the dumb phone that we're all after. But to make this more fun and not drag along for too long, this video, that is, I spent an entire weekend with the Wise Phone. I took my iPhone 13 Pro, I put it in my bedroom, and I switched fully to this dumb phone to see what the experience would be like. Stick around to the end of this video. I'm going to talk about how I wasn't really ready for what happened during that weekend. I'm excited to share with you all what happened. So what I did during that weekend was I actually took notes on the phone itself as I was experiencing the phone, as I was finding things I was missing out on, as I was finding great things about the phone. I took notes on the phone in the notes section itself and I'm just going to run through those quick fire. Before we dive into that quick fire section of the pros and cons of the Wise Phone device itself and the operating system, I did want to kind of walk around the phone to give you all an idea of what the operating system is like and sort of what we're working with in terms of what's available to us currently with the current iteration of Wise OS. So as you can see, there's no tap to wake. You do have to hit this side unlock button. It's got T-Mobile, which is the carrier that I'm currently on for it. You've got a few different battery, Wi-Fi, and cellular data here, as well as that the phone is in vibrate silent mode. You have the time, you have the date, swipe up to unlock. I have basically added all the possible, they don't call them apps, but whatever you wanna call them, tools into this sort of tool bin that are available. I just went ahead and put them all on here through sort of the parent portal side of things. To give a bit of reference, this phone was designed specifically for children, but I think more and more minimalists have found value in it, and I think Wise Phone 2 really leans into that. We might talk about that a little bit more later, but there is a parent portal, a locked sort of portal area where you can add and take away these tools. You've got a basic clock which just tells you you know you can add different parts of the world you've got of course your alarm stopwatch timer calculator I use a calculator on my phone all the time so I'm glad this is on here maps maps is actually way better again than the light phone 2 was it's an actual map system I can get directions it'll take me to where I'm going very similar to Google Maps I'm not sure that they have fully decided on who they're gonna use as their maps provider for wise phone 2 this maps has worked great for me in my testing music so there isn't Spotify streaming music but you can add your own tracks to the phone itself through the USB to the USB cable Notes, as you'll see, this is where I did my Wise Phone experience notes, which we'll get to in a minute. You do have a camera on the phone itself as well. Pretty basic, it does photo and video. You'll notice there are two cameras actually here on the back of the phone, but you can't switch between them. I guess it's locked to the sort of basic main lens there. You do have a flashlight which is cool, something I recognize, which I was gonna talk about later, but if you shake the device, the flashlight comes on, which my daughter had a lot of fun with that feature. Photos is interesting. It's just photos you can swipe through like this. There's not an actual gallery, which I'll talk about in a second as well. Settings, also very simple. If I can open it up here. 
restrictions, display, sound, and you'll see there's very little you can really do with this thing, but that's kind of what it's all about, right? It does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi as well. So if you want to connect your headphones to the device, if you want to connect it to your car for that kind of audio listening, those are options as well. Finally, you have your phone, which, you know, click on it, you get your main contacts here, you can favorite contacts, you can just dial a number, you can look at your recent calls. Messages, very similar. I've got my messages here, and just to open up, you know, what that kind of looks like within the system, very simplistic. Your person you're talking to is over here on the left, and what you send is on, so very simple. Here's sort of what that looks like. Hey man, awesome, great. So that's gonna run through, that's pretty much all there is on this phone. There are things that could be missing. Obviously, um, if you have any questions about this, let me know, but now that we've sort of run through the device and what's available there, let's go ahead and look, my friend just texted me back. This is a cool feature too. You'll notice these two little dots up here. And if I turn it off and on like this, you'll see those two, maybe hopefully you can see this, those two teeny dots that lets you know that you have a notification. You have either a message or a phone call. And then when you click through, you've got your messages here. Jonathan still thinks I'm using the light phone. All right back to the home screen and locked. On the side of the phone, you do have your volume rocker, your lock awake. There is a fingerprint reader on the back of this specific Wise Phone 1 device. Again, this is a Motorola device. They've just used their own operating system on. Fingerprint reader doesn't actually do anything. SIM card tray here, speaker grill, microphone, and a regular sort of micro USB. You do have a headphone jack and a microphone on the top as well. But again, this device currently is not actually able to be purchased. They've sort of pushed that to the side they sent me this unit, thank you Techless for sending me this, to kind of get acquainted with the software and look forward to Wise Phone 2 when it comes out. But without further ado, let's walk through my experience, quick fire of what I thought about this phone on the weekend that I used it specifically when I put my normal smartphone iPhone away and when I need to, I'll refer to the phone to show examples of things. First and foremost, this is the thing I sort of complained about with a light phone and I think for any iPhone user, Apple user coming from an iPhone to a device like this, it's hard to make the transition. You can either fully transition over, bring your SIM card and tell all your friends and family, hey, I'm no longer ha gonna have the blue bubble I've got green bubbles now, or you can do what I did. Thankfully, Techless sent me sort of a three month prepaid SIM card through um, T-Mobile, I think it was, and I've, it's allowed me to have a separate number. And I think for really any user who's not trying to completely change over to a dumb phone from their current smartphone device, this might be the best bet. Obviously, you're going to be paying for a phone plan separate from the one you're currently on, which that's an added cost per month, but there are some really, really cheap phone plans out there, especially when you're only using you know, talk and text and maybe a little bit of map data. So that is an option, I think that's best. What I did was I told my friends and family, hey, for the weekend, this is gonna be the phone I'm gonna be using. If you need to contact me, Here's that phone number. You know, just, just telling your friends and family. Obviously, this is a story for another day, what that sort of unpacks, how that relationship works out, and how you should probably appropriately notify people that you're going to be switching devices for the month. Definitely missing Spotify. I listen to Spotify a lot, especially on the way to and from work. Whenever I'm in the car, my daughter kept asking me to play songs from Moana, and I couldn't because I had this phone, and that kind of hurts. I don't, I don't like having other people have to basically have pain points because of my, you know, shunning a smart device. That's another conversation for another day as well, but hopefully there would be an option for streaming music in a future update, especially in the Wise Phone 2. But I did miss Spotify, but again, you can add music to the device itself. I could have connected this to my car's Bluetooth and added music. I never got around to doing that, but that's something that you're able to do. So one thing I found was typing out messages on the phone wasn't super accurate in the screen, like, ability to read touches wasn't super accurate as well. Now, I think this is definitely going to be fixed in Wise Phone 2 when they make their own devices. Hey man, how is it going? So, hey man, how is IR going? 
Not too bad. I had worse experience typing on this, but that's kind of the extent of it. Like you'll miss things here and there. You kind of have to go back through and use this little bubble thing. Normal typing, it just doesn't pick things up as well. You kind of have to peck a little bit harder than I do, say, on my iPhone. All right, let's see. I'll also say the camera shutter. So as we open up the camera here, camera, the shutter is pretty slow. So you can see I just took a photo and it just now took it. All right. And it's a little like slow and buggy with taking a uh, photograph. With kids, that's a little annoying. You wanna catch them right in the moment. I will also say the camera's not too great, but that said, Wise Phone 2 is touting a like 64 megapixel camera, I think. Really big, nice camera. It's gonna take great photos. As a dad, as someone in the family, it's good to be able to take great photos and I wanna be able to do that and not be lacking that because I've you know left my iPhone in the bedroom for the weekend. I wish there was weather here. I did wear my Apple Watch during the weekend and I was basically at home for most of the weekend, but when we did go out and about, Obviously my Apple Watch doesn't have cellular data and it can't be tied to the phone itself. So I had no way of knowing what the temperature was outside. I wish there was weather on here. I will take this time to say that on a Wise Phone 2, they're working on sort of a beta thing where there are requested applications that they highly vet and will be potentially available to you. So let's use weather as an example. If enough people say, hey, we'd love weather, that's obviously not really distracting. It's just a tool that we would like to have on the device. They go through a rigorous process and be like, you know what? Yeah, weather would be nice to have. Let's allow that to be available and they'll work on that. So they're kind of opening up what's available in terms of apps on the device, kind of, but it still all goes through them. You can't just access an app store. They're gonna have sort of their own tool drawer or something like that that they're calling it that you can, again, pick and choose from as future updates come around. I also wish there was a calendar and if it could be connected to my iCal, that would be fantastic as well. We use calendar a lot as a family, me and my wife specifically. So if we were able to have that, that would be amazing as well. I wish there were podcasts with the light phone. You could actually subscribe to a podcast RSS feed, which would have been really nice on here to be able to have some sort of data pulling episodes down, or even while you're sitting on Wi-Fi, I can pull those episodes down to listen to. You obviously can't open links. I had a couple people send me like links to things and you can't click on them because there's no browser here, which that's just kind of the way it is. You could either text yourself to your smartphone and look at it later or have the person send it to your smartphone instead. I found with this, because there was very little to do on it, I read books more often than I used to. I wasn't scrolling, doom scrolling. I wasn't checking email. I was just using the phone for communication and then putting it down when I didn't need it. In fact, funny story, I actually went into maps and just started like saying, how far would it be to walk to Aruba from here? Like that was something I did <laughs> when I didn't have access to a book or something and I was bored, I was just using maps for entertainment. So that's the kind of separation from the internet that I am looking for. <laughs> Again, this is a Motorola Moto E device. I've actually really liked the device itself. I know that Wise Phone 2 is gonna be their own device. By the way, it looks fantastic. I know you've already seen it in this video, but it looks really nice. I love the design. But in terms of this phone, it was light. I didn't like the case. It's just, I've never really liked these kind of cases anyway, but I didn't like the case too much and it wasn't super comfy because there's like the places that it was cut in the mold is kind of scratchy when you're holding the phone. It does give that all black look, but I also really don't mind this blue look either on this Motorola E device. So just a few little things that I noted on that as well. Pretty nice to hold, pretty slim. I like the rounded edges here. It's just a little bit here. Let me show you compared to my iPhone. It's just a little bit taller, a little bit wider, and actually a little bit thinner than the iPhone itself. But there's the comparison there. I didn't notice that big of a change in my pocket. You can see the dimensions of the Wise Phone 2 on their website pre-order page. One thing I wish there was, and I don't know if this is gonna be on Wise Phone 2 or not, but there's no like swipe to go back. If you're like deep in a message, so like say here I'm talking to Jonathan, I can't just go home like this. I have to hit back, and then I have to hit back, 
and now I'm home. I wish there was just a quick go home button, which is interesting. It could be they're changing that for Wise Phone 2 and that operating system in the future. As I said, there's really no photo gallery. You just have to swipe through them, which is a little strange. I think it makes you more intentional with how many photos you take, but I mean, I would just like to be able to pick through a gallery and then send off photos to family and friends that way instead of having to swipe, share, swipe, share, that takes a little bit of time. The phone calls itself, I talked to my mom and dad for like an hour one night on this device and it was very loud and clear. I mean, that's more to do with the phone than really the operating system, but calls and texts have been great. No worries there. Battery life was really good on this thing. I think this could probably last four plus days with you know, regular sort of usage on this device. Again, with the light phone, I had some issues with, I put the phone in a drawer and like a day and a half later, I went to get it and it was completely just dead. This you can leave around and it'll last even longer, but when you're actually using it, I found I used it for four days and didn't have to recharge at all. Another thought that I had quickly, what if instead of buying an iPad, you kept your smartphone and then bought the Wise phone instead? Because, then you have a more intentional device than just another larger version of the smartphone you already have. That was just a quick note I wrote. I've had iPads in the past and they're such a strange piece of technology. I don't really know how they fit into my life uh, specifically, but a dumb phone that I can use on the side, now that sounds a little bit more enticing to me. It's cheaper than an iPad and it allows you to be more intentional with your life. So. Just a thought. One thing that I noted was all the apps are on the left side here, which would be nice if I was left-handed, but I'm right-handed, so I thought I was having to reach over and touch these, but you can actually just touch on the line that it's on. So I wish there was a way still, even still, to be able to move these over to the right side potentially, or even have them centered more like the light phone, but it's really not a big deal because as long as you hit on that sort of hit bar that's a, a line across, then you're able to open the app, no problem. Right, a few more things. You know, the wife wanted a better camera. She didn't like the photos that this took. I caught some really cute photos of my kids on the phone, sent them to my wife. She was like, ah, I wish this was on your iPhone. Again, with Wise Phone 2, it's got a way better camera, so I'm not worried about that in the future. Auto brightness is slow to brighten out of pocket, at least with this device. So what I found was like when I have the phone in my pocket, I pull it out, it takes a second for the brightness to come on. And that was a little frustrating, but again, it could be built into the OS to cause you to slow down a little bit. So I don't know, could be a good or bad thing. Another thing that my wife wishes was on this phone was a lot of times, and it might be creepy to you all, maybe this isn't a problem for you all, but we like to be able to check where each other is on you know, iCloud to be able to use the Find My service and be like, oh, he hasn't even left the church yet, you know? Or maybe, oh, he left the church, he's almost home, let me get this thing ready, or whatever it might be. We like to see each other's location just to check in on each other. And obviously, if Maria couldn't do that. I, have, I had a meeting somewhere and it kind of went over her and Maria was like, I don't, I couldn't see where you were. So it was a bit of concern for how we work. It doesn't bother me. It might be creepy to you all, but a cool feature with Wise Phone is if you're using it for your kids, there is a sort of trackable feature for parents to be able to log in and see where your kid has been kind of thing. But in terms of obviously using Find My, which is an Apple feature, you can't do that on this phone. The last thing I will note, which is kind of silly, is when you go into or advanced settings date and time if you switch to 24 hour time and this probably doesn't bother a lot of you but the number is not centered 1249 is not centered so techless if you're listening i use military time just because i i don't know why i just like it better and the number's not centered. However, if I come back in here and I turn it to not 24 hour time, that number is centered. I think it has something to do with that PM being justified to the right or something. But I ended up, because I'm so annoying, I ended up just going with regular non 24 hour time because 
I'd like things to be centered. I just want to give some closing thoughts on the device itself. So the Wise Phone first edition, Wise Phone 1, whatever you want to call this, has been out for four years now. And from what I can tell, what they're implementing in the OS and in Wise Phone 2, the device, is directly related to really the issues that I had with this while using it. But from what I understand, I think everyone who has tried Wise Phone 1 has created these concerns or issues or things they would like to see changed and Wise Phone has addressed those intentionally, yes, like they're not just going to open up access to the App Store that would ruin their whole purpose, but they've listened to their users and they're making those changes with the second device. It's a great company, a company that listens to its users but still holds firm to the core values and their beliefs and why they set out to make things in the first place. So I personally am super duper duper excited for Wise Phone 2 because it checks off a lot of the concerns I had while using this a few weekends ago. Which brings me to how it was using this for the weekend. I was not ready for how much I truly enjoyed this phone. I think because I had tried the light phone and it caused a lot of issues, I was not super excited to try and put all my eggs into this basket for the weekend, but I was present with my kids, with my wife. I was able to be reached by friends and family. I did text some friends. In fact, at night while my wife and I were watching TV, when I would usually be scrolling, I just texted some friends, asked them how their day was going, tried to be friendly and social because that's all this can do. There goes the flashlight. That's all this device can do. So it really fits the bill of what I was looking for in a dumb phone. And I really love the idea. I think I will probably, and I didn't have a lot of issues when I told my family, hey, I'm switching to this number for the weekend. It went over really well. I think it could become a common practice for me, especially when the Wise Phone 2 comes out with what, you know, obviously I have to test it first, see if it actually does everything that they are hoping it will. But I think this could be a normal thing that I do on the weekend. Put my smartphone away, go with this dumb phone, and just be there with my family. Be present. I thoroughly enjoyed this phone. Pre-orders for the Wise Phone 2 are at the link in the description. Again, you'll get an extra $25 off. My code, if you choose to put that in at checkout instead, is just Spencer Scott Pugh, all one word, and you'll get that $25 off. I think they're literally $50 off right now for pre-orders. And the cost of the phone is really just cost because of how they've set up pricing there. So it's a good deal, good bang for buck. It's more than anything going to be priceless when it gives you back your time. So I'm in love with Wise Phone. I'm in love with Techless and what they stand for. I'm excited to see what they come out with in the future. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, check out this video. Don't forget to watch my Light Phone 2 review as well. Like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one.